Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about Spleen Ultrasound Reporting. We will see how to write ultrasound reports for the spleen. We will look at the clinical history, findings and impression. This is not a complete abdominal ultrasound report. The first case is of accessory spleen or splenule. The clinical history in this example is abdominal discomfort. These are the findings. The main spleen appears normal in size and shape. An additional well-defined hypoechoic structure is identified adjacent to the main spleen. Then the size of this accessory spleen is written. It demonstrates homogeneous echo texture similar to the main spleen. And there was no significant vascularity within the accessory spleen. No other abnormalities are noted elsewhere in the abdomen or pelvis. Here is the impression. An accessory spleen is identified adjacent to the main spleen. The accessory spleen appears normal in echo texture and does not demonstrate any significant abnormalities. And in the end, it is important to write clinical correlation is recommended to evaluate the significance and potential clinical impact of the accessory spleen. It is important to write about clinical correlation in the impression. Here is a case of splenomegaly. In the findings, you must mention that the spleen is enlarged and write its size. Here is the impression. Splenic enlargement consistent with splenomegaly is noted. Characterized by heterogeneous echo texture. There were no focal lesions or cysts in this example. Further evaluation and correlation with clinical history and lab tests may be warranted to determine the underlying cause of splenomegaly. In the case of splenic cleft, the spleen is usually normal in size and shape. A well-defined hyperechoic linear structure is identified within the spleen. This structure runs horizontally along the short axis of the spleen. And in the end, the size of the splenic cleft is written. In the impression, a splenic cleft is identified within the spleen. This is a normal anatomic variant and does not represent any significant pathology or abnormality. Here is a case of a splenic cyst. These are the findings. A well-defined anechoic structure is identified within the spleen. It will have smooth borders and no internal septations. This is a case of a simple cyst. Then the size of the cyst is written. There were no solid components or calcifications within the cyst. Also, there was no vascularity or blood flow detected within the cyst. This is the impression. A splenic cyst is identified within the spleen. The cyst appears benign with no concerning features such as solid components or vascularity. Given the patient's clinical presentation and the characteristics of the cyst, further evaluation and management may be considered to ensure the stability and long-term follow-up 
of the splenic cyst. Here is a splenic cyst with calcified walls. In the findings, a well-defined cystic structure is identified. It demonstrates anechoic fluid content and is surrounded by calcified walls. No internal septations are observed within the cyst. No significant vascularity or blood flow is detected within the cyst. This is the impression. A splenic cyst with calcified walls is identified within the spleen. The presence of calcifications suggests a long-standing cyst. No internal septations are noted. And in the end, the line of clinical correlation is written. Here is a case of complex splenic cyst. The cyst demonstrates mixed echogenicity with both hypoechoic and hyperechoic areas. Internal septations and debris are observed within the cyst. No internal vascularity was detected within the cyst. This is the impression. A complex splenic cyst is identified within the spleen, demonstrating mixed echogenicity with internal septations and debris. No internal vascularity was observed and it ends with the line of clinical correlation. Here is a report of hemangioma. In the findings, a well-defined hyperechoic lesion is identified. Then the size of the lesion is written. In the impression, you can mention the hyperechoic lesion. And you can end the impression by writing about clinical correlation. This is a report for lymphangioma. In the findings, a multicystic lesion is identified. It has multiple anechoic cysts with thin septations. The cystic spaces appear to be interconnected, creating a honeycomb or sponge-like appearance. In the impression, you can mention the lymphangioma and also mention multiple anechoic cystic spaces with thin septations which resemble a honeycomb or sponge-like appearance. This is an example report of extramedullary hematopoiesis. The indication was a follow-up for extramedullary hematopoiesis in the spleen. The findings in this example were an enlarged spleen measuring 16.8 cm in length and a hyperechoic lesion was seen. These findings are written in the impression and the impression ends with the line of clinical correlation. The findings for an inflammatory pseudotumor include an enlarged spleen and in this example a well-defined hypoechoic mass is identified. It is heterogeneous in echotexture with areas of increased vascularity on Doppler imaging. These findings are written in the impression and further evaluation including histopathological analysis and additional imaging modalities or biopsy are advised. Here is a case of lymphoma. The findings include an enlarged spleen. The splenic parenchyma is diffusely heterogeneous and hypoechoic. Multiple hypoechoic nodules are observed within the spleen, which demonstrate irregular margins and varying sizes.
Doppler imaging reveals increased vascularity within the nodules. This is the impression. Significant splenomegaly with diffusely heterogeneous and hypoechoic splenic parenchyma. Multiple hypoechoic nodules with irregular margins and increased vascularity. Suspicious for splenic lymphoma. Here is a case of splenic metastasis. The clinical history was a known primary malignancy. In the findings, the spleen was enlarged and multiple hypoechoic nodules are observed scattered throughout the splenic parenchyma. The nodules demonstrate irregular margins and variable sizes. Doppler imaging reveals minimal vascularity within the nodules. In the impression, you can write the findings and also mention the history of primary malignancy and you can advise biopsy and further evaluation with other imaging modalities and a referral to an oncologist. Here is a case of splenic abscess. The indication was abdominal pain and fever. These are the findings. The spleen is enlarged and there is a well-defined hypoechoic and heterogeneous lesion and this is its size with internal echoes and posterior acoustic enhancement suggestive of a splenic abscess. There is surrounding hyperechogenicity and increased vascularity seen in the adjacent splenic parenchyma, suggestive of associated inflammation. These findings are written in the impression and clinical correlation and further evaluation with imaging modalities such as CT scan are advised. This is a case of Gamna Gandhi bodies. The clinical history was anemia. In the findings, there are multiple hyperechoic foci which demonstrate a popcorn appearance and are scattered throughout the spleen. This is the impression. These findings are consistent with the presence of Gamna Gandhi bodies in the spleen. Correlation with the patient's clinical history and further evaluation may be necessary if there are additional concerning findings or symptoms. Here is a case of sarcoidosis. The clinical history was fatigue and weight loss. These are the findings. Multiple hypoechoic nodules are observed within the splenic parenchyma. The nodules demonstrate irregular margins and variable echogenicity. Here is the impression. We do not write sarcoidosis in the impression because the findings overlap with other abnormalities such as metastasis or tumors. So after writing the findings, we will write about clinical correlation, lab results and additional imaging studies. Here is a case of splenic trauma. These are the findings. There is evidence of splenic parenchyma disruption and irregularity with hypoechoic areas suggestive of hematoma formation. The splenic capsule is intact without evidence of rupture. No significant free fluid or active bleeding is seen in the abdomen. These findings are written in the impression. 
then clinical correlation and further evaluation such as CT scans are advised. Here is a case of splenic infarcts. In the findings, multiple hypoechoic wedge shaped areas are seen. The hypoechoic areas demonstrate a lack of vascularity on color Doppler imaging. In the impression, you can mention the multiple hypoechoic wedge shaped areas as well as absence of vascularity within the hypoechoic areas which support the diagnosis of infarcts and then you can write about clinical correlation here is a case of splenic torsion in the findings the spleen appears enlarged there is a focal area of hypoechoic and distorted splenic parenchyma. The splenic vessels, including the splenic artery and vein, show twisting or torsion. Color Doppler imaging demonstrates reduced or absent blood flow within the affected splenic vessels. In the impression, you can write about the focal hypoechoic and distorted splenic parenchyma and twisting of splenic vessels and also mention the absence of blood flow within these twisted vessels and in the end you can write about clinical correlation here is a case of splenic artery aneurysm in the findings a focal dilatation of the splenic artery is identified. Then the size of this dilated artery is written. The aneurysm demonstrates a pulsatile flow within its lumen on color Doppler imaging. These findings are written in the impression as well. And in the end, you can write about further evaluation and clinical correlation thank you so much for watching please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos